Good morning, adventurers. Ah! And right out the gate, we have a bunny. That was awesome. So today I am in Loveland, Colorado, where I'm going to kick off the day with some awesome art at a really interesting sculpture park. I'm excited. Let's get this day going. Go. We are at the Chipungu Sculpture Park and it's really cool because all the sculptures here have a super amazing meaning. They were all created by the natives of Zimbabwe and they tell this wonderful story about their culture and things like that. So we're going to go along. Right now we're starting off at Entry 8 which is in the wetlands area. There are three different loops and after we get to the end then we'll have a full picture and understanding of all the art. So let's take a morning hike. Our first sculpture along the way here is the Bird of Starvation, which is said to, if you see this, be prepared to buckle down because it's not a good sign. This is going to be a sign of hardship. The detail on this one is very interesting because you can see like right through here, the ribbing. So that kind of makes sense. It really does. No sculpture one. We have a lot of them to go. Is called an anga and owl so this guy was the healer and he had an owl that he would send into the village and when he would do this it would spy on the villagers and bring back all of the little secrets the same healer was also known to be a witch doctor and in order for him to get to different villages he would ride on a hyena that's what's portrayed in this one right here. It tells about how he would use this hyena to be there extra fast and to be able to do it under the radar. Kind of an interesting story so far, don't you think? In this sculpture, they're praying for rain. Apparently there's drought and they want to talk to the gods so that they can get the rain to come down to help them out. Now, all of these sculptures are based on different kinds of tales that were woven through the rich history. So they have factual basis based on things that over time were very meaningful to the villagers. So that probably was a really big one, especially knowing that in some of those areas, they have prolonged drought for long, long times. That can't be good. exhibit here is called Chipungu and I was reading about the legacy of this god which watched over the people and this particular sculpture kind of speaks to that. When they were in drought and famine he still managed to provide for the people and this is what it's all about. Feeding them during hardships because they continued to believe. This next one we have to walk through some grass to get to. It tells about how having twins was considered to be a curse or a bad omen. And so in the nighttime, a mother would have to choose to take one of them kind of away. And that's what this sculpture is about. So it shows the mother holding the two twins. That's just terrible sounding. It looks like such a painful thing. Hmm. In the culture, it was said that eagles were the spirit bird, basically. So in this particular sculpture called Man and His Eagle, this man has his eagle in hand to provide wisdom, reassurance, and advise him to help him make the best choices for himself and his village. Now in this tale, it was said that a girl was possessed by the rain spirit or the lion spirit. And in doing so, she was then able to see the future and being able to predict all of the rain going forward. Well, you can only imagine that this would be a huge thing, especially in the time of drought. So this is the sculpture for that particular part of this very interesting tale. See how it has the spirit and the girl? Let's get closer. Next up is the whirlwind spirit or the bad spirit. Now it was said that if you pointed at it with your little finger, it would change directions. Nope, nope, the sculpture doesn't move. 
This next one is a little bit morbid, so just hang on for the ride here. So if an elder died, they would pass the spirit off into a young bull. When they would do that, they would wait two years. Then the bull would be killed and it would release the spirit, finally, so that it could go in peace. So that's what this sculpture is about. As you can see, it has the body of a man and the head of a bull. You can imagine, if there isn't much rain, the harvest will not be that good. So this one is actually called the small harvest. It's called that because it signifies that even though they put in all the hard work, they didn't have much harvest to reap. So it was very thankless and uncomfortable and a very demeaning feeling. As you can see by the small amount of harvest that she has. Out here at this park, we're still close to all the urban spaces. Right here is like a doctor's office. Over here is a promenade mall. So while you're out and about doing your regular everyday thing, you can actually take a time out and come and see this amazing art. Have a little walk, maybe even enjoy a picnic. actually goes into the roles of the different people in the tribe. This one is the role of the woman. She is there to provide for her family comfort and support. So that's what this sculpture is about. Her being able to comfort her child who is not understanding why they're having to go through this terrible thing with all the drought and the hunger and th things like that. Isn't that the role of a mom anyway? I think so. Moms are awesome. Love you mom. every person pulled their weight and was an instrumental part of how the village functioned. That did not exclude the older people. This is the symbol for the grandmother. Although she's not able to do all of the hard physical manual labor, she still can do small tasks like carrying water and advising those who are younger as to how that they can do better to potentially provide for their village more. I love this sculpture because I think that it's really important to realize that no matter how old someone is, they always have the ability to contribute to the cause. And I love that and we should learn a little bit more about that and respect that. And this sculpture takes it all the way back to a village in Zimbabwe to show that that doesn't have culture or bounds. It's everywhere. So yeah, we can learn something from this. This is Moses. The sculptor actually was very impressed not only by Moses' leadership skills, but because of his giant heart. So she made sure to have an area right in the center for his heart. I think that that's just really awesome because Moses is traditionally known in the Christian religion. However, a lot of the people of Zimbabwe are not considered to be Christian. On the theme of the role of women, this loop starts us off with this sculpture, which is considered to be the one of nursing back to health. Now, we all know that a mom will take care of their kiddos and make sure that they're okay, but this one specifically says that he is our future. We must take care of him. I think that that is awesome. And the detail here is great because it looks as though she's providing food for him, even if she might not have some very selfless act. This next sculpture is a very sombering one. Um, it kind of goes outside of some of the others which have talked about the gods and things like that and talks about a personal experience. This one is about a person who has come home to die. They were taken to the doctor and diagnosed with HIV and now it is the mother's job to take care of them until they pass. That's a terrible, terrible thought to have, but it's something that is such a reality, especially in countries like Zimbabwe, where they have tons of these kinds of issues and they don't have the resources or the manpower to make it happen that they can have all of these life-saving drugs. And I think that we so often neglect to remember that in the United States where we have more access to things. So this is very thought-provoking and Although I've enjoyed the others and I feel as though they have a lot of meaning and that's very important, I think that this is a reality that is something that we definitely need to take into consideration. This one is called Me Too Mama. And as you can see, she has a child up top 
and another one who wants to be picked up. The caption says, he doesn't realize he's too heavy and I can't carry them both. I think that that is a burden that a lot of moms kind of struggle with. When you have more than one child, you honestly want to be there for each and every one of them all the time, but at some point in time, they get a little bit too big to just carry around. And it's a sad moment when you get to that, but at the same time, it's reality. So that is a really nice take on that particular aspect, and it's a beautiful sculpture. birth of a new child and while the caption says that he couldn't have come at a worse time because of the conditions that has still brought the mother joy love and hope and I think that that's great because I think that that's one of those things that sometimes we think we can't handle something in life just in general but we're given these little Easter eggs of joy to really take on and go with and it doesn't necessarily have to always be a kid it could be a lot of things but it's how you look at your situation, not how you think of your situation negatively. So that's my take on that one at least. Might not be yours. You have to come, you have to show me, you have to tell me what you think. That's what this is about. Engage. As I previously stated, a lot of the villages and then also the tribes in Zimbabwe did not believe in Christianity. Instead, they believed in different gods that would provide different kinds of things. So in this sculpture, the man, as you can see, looks like he's being embraced by the spirit of the bird. So he sought assistance and help through this spirit, which is now engulfing him in almost like a hug to help him out, to uplift him and to provide him guidance for his next steps. I just really like that one because it almost looks like, like I said, a hug. section that talks about the children of the village and this one is called Teenage Secrets. It talks about how the secrets go on just the same as they do within any culture about not telling everybody everything. So this is our first of the children. Let's see what else there is. I learned when coming into this section of the park was that in Zimbabwe they did not use any kind of blasting materials to harvest the rocks. So all the sculptures we're seeing were naturally sourced by hand, meaning that they came out of the world looking all sorts of crazy and that actually was part of what inspired the artist to create the pieces in the way that they did with the selected rock. If you'll notice over the entire span there's been no two pieces which have had the exact same color or texture. So that is because of oxidization. Whenever they pull these out, they use these natural treatments and things like that to really help the rock come out to its full potential. And you can see that in the art and it's epic. It's so unique. I haven't seen anything similar to this other than this exhibit. So I'm gonna have to start looking into more of the African style art harvested in this particular way because it's beautiful. And with that being said, I think we've taken a nice little break here on the wonderful Provided Benches. Aren't they cute? Let's get going and look at more art. This one is, well, you guessed it, Leapfrog. On this you see that you have several children playing and enjoying themselves. And these are typical games that would have been played in the Zimbabwe village. This one is a sentiment I think all children can agree with. You'll notice that the child is pulling on the mom's leg and the caption is, you never listen to me, mom. While we've been walking around, we've noticed that there are beautiful, amazing ponds and prairie lands and things like this, but we've also noticed some downed trees. And so I got to a sign that actually says that this area is attempting to preserve all of the different ecosystems that are found in this region. So that means that that dead tree over there is the home of something, so they don't want to get rid of it. They do keep it nice and cleaned up out here. They do have signs saying, please don't get the water. And the reason being for that is they want to make sure that they give everything out here an awesome opportunity to thrive. Even though it is in an urban setting, this is an amazing outdoor space. Not only do we have art, but we also have the outdoors. I think this is a winning experience here. I really am a fan 
fan of this piece right here, which is called Back to My Roots. The caption talks about how the man had moved on and gone to the city, but that he could hear the music that was traditionally played in his village and it would take him back mentally to where he started. And I think that's so true for all of us. No matter where you go, no matter how far that you've come from where you started out, there's always gonna be that one thing that triggers those fond memories of wherever home is. For me as a travel blogger, no matter where I go in the United States, I always have these little markers that just automatically tug at my heartstrings and remind me of what I have at home and where I've come from and things like that. So this sculpture right here is really cool and I think again echoes that our sentiments are the same no matter where we are and that in itself is something awesome to take away from this. park you will find various representations of the god of the skies or the eagle and this is one of them and how the artist saw this particular sky god which would bring them luck and fortune. I think that it's really interesting to see the different interpretations from the different artists that have actually contributed this exhibit because everybody sees their god a little bit different. signifies all the different generations. So you can see at the bottom, the base would be the older generations, which now the younger generations rely on to tell the stories and continue on. It's a really beautiful sculpture. And unlike some of them, this one is super smooth. And then on the back, it's very textured. So it has a lot of depth to that sculpture in itself on how they milled the different pieces of stone to create that look. As we continue walking, you'll notice that this park has just this wonderful area that you can walk on or that is wheelchair accessible, which I really like. And they also have the paths that you can get off on if you want to walk a little bit further, but don't necessarily need that accessibility. So it's a nice park for everybody. There's tons of different benches, trash receptacles, even a bathroom and it's beautiful out here. I mean, look at this. The water flows through here whenever it's a little bit more moist and whenever the rains are coming. You have the beautiful trees, which are still starting to bloom. And then of course, the amazing sculptures. This is another one that I think makes you think a little bit. It's talking about how she's gathering firewood and at the same time, she's facing this great opposition because people are saying that they're destroying the world around them by harvesting the wood, but they can't afford gas, water, or electricity. So this is the only way that she can provide for her family. And at the same time, she's catching criticism over it, even though she's trying to do whatever she can. So that's something that we also need to think about with other countries and other cultures, and sometimes just the world around us. we stopped off at this last sculpture which is of young Zizis. Now he was said to be daring and inquisitive and the sculpture definitely shows that with the expression on his face. This is going to be the last sculpture that we see today in our wonderful exhibit about the Zimbabwe culture. This has been an amazing park to visit and I would definitely encourage you to stop off if you're ever in Loveland. Art can be found anywhere and the parks in this whole state just kind of express that over and over and over. You don't have to be in the mountains to have a good experience here in Colorado. So until next time guys, bye.